Hello, hello, Facebookers, Facebook Live. It is Deshaun Antoinette Booker here with you today as promised, as agreed. So I am just going to give it a moment for those of you to actually begin to join this conversation because that is what I am having. I am having a conversation. I am Deshaun Antoinette Booker, your maximizing coach. And as agreed this entire week, I am coming to you to talk about uh, bloom where you are planted. And so that is the discussion, the conversation, right? Bloom where you are planted. And so we started off yesterday with hello, 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 Kwanda. Thank you for joining me. As agreed, I am here today. I am going nowhere. So I just want to say this. I am at, right, Los Angeles. Okay, okay, that was the police car. So listen, I was super duper hot yesterday. Number one, I did not get any reception in the office, in my office, right? So I'm um, going to take in a few minutes of this. Okay, awesome, thank you. So I am by the window, so if we hear the traffic, right, that's okay, because I was just extremely hot yesterday. So nevertheless, I am Deshaun Antoinette Booker, your maximizing coach. And if you are joining me for the first time, I want to say welcome. Thank you for joining me. And for those of you that are watching the replay, thank you for joining me as well. So if you can't watch all of what I'm going to give you today, you can always go to my Facebook page where you are seeing this now and hit the replay and you can get all of this juicy juicy nuggets that I have for you so as I said I wanted to say this hello auntie Betty how are you joining us from up north thank you for joining me I am Deshaun Antoinette Booker and I am in the business of helping women and of course people as well but women in particular I'm in the business of helping women do three things to one to get intentional to two to live life with integrity and to manifest increase i have a coaching speaking training company called maximizing your magnificence hello thank you jackie shook for joining today and so today i am continuing what i started on yesterday and what i started where is bloom where you are planted okay bloom where you are planted and so yesterday i talked about how do you bloom when you're planted Wow, you know what? When you are emotionally depleted. And I spoke all about that. So you're going to have to go to my Facebook page to check all of that out. Today, I am talking to you about how to bloom where you're planted spiritually, where you believe what's going on, Michael. Thanks for joining. Thanks for stopping by. How do you bloom spiritually when you have been spiritually detached? spiritually depleted by unforeseen tragedies, trauma, circumstances, situations in your life. And yesterday I spoke to everyone about my mom passed away, um, Joyce Ferguson passed away last November, November the 13th of a brain aneurysm. Now my mother didn't pass immediately after she had the brain aneurysm, no. What she did was she actually had the surgery and uh, she was left in what they call a persistent vegetative state and so once that happened what happened for me is that i became weak i did not understand connect okay hopefully we won't have any other interruptions i want to welcome you all hello miss tucker i'm going to always call miss tucker miss tucker because she was my high school teacher so i'm always going to say miss tucker thank you for joining again today so yes we're not going to have any other problems with this video okay because i've already moved to this location where i was from yesterday so what i'm saying is this i am deshaun antoinette booker your maximizing coach and i am here to maximize your magnificence and after I lost my mom last year it has not even been a year yet my mom had an aneurysm a brain aneurysm in which I along with my family but I'm speaking from my perspective okay and so once my mom was in this what they call persistent vegetative state for nine months we were hoping right we were praying right we were standing on our faith well my mom we had to then go ahead and make a decision that that wasn't light for her, okay? And we put her in hospice. 
fast forward. I could not see beyond that. I could not see that I would ever speak to a group of people. I would minister. I would transform lives. I would be a coach. I didn't see that in my future. I did not. My mom was not just my mother. My mother was my biggest cheerleader. And I mean that with every being within me. She was. I don't want anyone to get offended. My mother was my biggest cheerleader. Yes, she was. So I didn't know how I was going to move forward and press forward. God had me in a place. He had me quiet. And I talked about this yesterday. He had me in what I call an incubate stage. I was in the incubator with me and my higher source. Oh my goodness, did I have a time of my life. I learned about myself. There was some introspective work. I learned about how others show up for you and how they don't show up for you. Hello, Sharika, my cousin. Thank you for joining us. And so when that stage of my life was beginning to now allow me to move, this is why I'm talking to you today. Because I decided that it was time for me to get back into my assignment, right? My assignment. And so last week or so, I knew that I had to do that by using the Facebook Live tool so that I can begin to coach from where I have come from. But first, I thought I had another another idea. I was going to talk on something else. And God said, no, you're going to talk about how you had to bloom where you were planted during those nine months and after with the ordeal with your mother. You're going to talk on that, on what I did for you. So get your pens, get your paper. You're going to take notes. I am the how cool, how to coach. I don't just do a lot of talking and then I leave you like, okay, that was great, right? No, I give you keys. Say keys with me, keys. And the reason why I give you keys is because the keys do what? They unlock. They unlock the door to new unlimited possibilities. And so I give keys to everything that I coach on. So today we're talking about bloom, right? How to bloom where you are, where you are planted spiritually. When you are spiritually defeated, spiritually detached, okay? Where your faith feels like it's not doing anything for you. Where you feel like, you know, what am I doing here? Let me tell you what keys mean, okay? K-E-Y-S. I've been using this for years. Keys mean keeping everything you say and do secure. So everything we say, secure, secure, okay? Fabulous. So when you have a dark hour, as I did, right? And that wasn't my first dark hour losing my mother, but it has certainly been what has changed my life. My life has been forever changed. Like an entire part of me went when my mother left this earth. Absolutely. You need to know that. Like the Deshaun you're looking at today is not the same Deshaun before my mother, Joyce Ferguson, had her brain aneurysm or was attacked with that and then transitioned. I am not that woman. I am a whole nother woman, but that's the rebirthing process of our God, of our God. So I want to say this. I am not about manufacturing notes and manufacturing theories, and that's not what I do. I'm not here to sell you something that is a get-rich-quick scheme. That's not what I do. I'm not going to give you some flowery and emotional sound bites. Ooh, I said that. Yes, I'm not going to do that. I am going to keep it as authentic and pure as possible because that is why I've shown up for you and I'm taking action. So I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to just really go through as I can, but I want to say something to you. If you hear my dog Bison barking, that's because another dog is outside walking by and Bison is absolutely the dog protector, okay, of this property. I just want you to know about Bison. My cousin Michael, Mikey has joined. He just had a birthday. How you doing, Mikey? Check out what your cousin has for you. I have some juicy, juicy pearls of strength today. We're talking about how to bloom where you are planted, okay, spiritually, when you've been spiritually defeated. I have to say this. 
We are so accustomed to saying things and not really giving knowledge, right, a reference to where they come from. Bloom where you're planted is not something that was just created and made up. It actually comes from the Bible. It's from 1 Corinthians 7, 20 and 24. Yes, it is. It is when Paul was speaking about being in slavery or being a free person and which is the best of those situations and how do you make the best of that situation? That is where that comes from. Okay, so I just want us to be very, very clear on that. So first thing I want you to know, the first thing I want you to know is this. Number one, when you are feeling spiritually depleted and spiritually detached because of your dark hour, and you will, and that's okay. That's quite all right, right? The first thing you need to do, number one, write it down, my keys here. You must give up the illusion that you must struggle. You must give up the illusion that you must struggle. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to do struggling. There is no, I'm on this island by myself and I have to struggle. No, let me explain to you today so that you can get rid of that habit, of that toxic way of thinking. When you believe that you have to str struggle and have suffering in your life, you are saying there is no other options. Suffering means there's no other options. Suffering also means that there's a loss, that you are holding on to this loss of something. Now, although I lost my mother, absolutely, that's real. I did not lose my sanity. I did not lose my sense of knowledge. I did not lose my faith. I did not lose my sense of living. I didn't lose those things. I was still here. So I want you to know that you must give up, you have to give up the illusion that we have to struggle. We have this struggle mentality, people, that if you're, if you're going to get somewhere far, farther, if you're going to make it better, then you have to struggle. I can't ask nobody for help. I have to do it by myself. I don't want nobody to think I don't know how to do this. I have to be, you know, the woman with the red cape. Take off the red cape, men and women, and stop believing that you have to to struggle. You don't have to struggle. That isn't anything that you must do in order to go forward to succeed. You don't have to do that. You have to give up that illusion, right? I just want to know if you hear me, tap your screens and let me know. Yes, Deshaun, I have been having this illusion that I have to struggle, that I have to some way prove to myself prove to the world that if I didn't struggle, I don't deserve it, right? Absolutely, absolutely, Shug. We have to give that illusion up. So yes, this is how you're going to do what? This is how you are going to bloom where you are planted. Because when life conditions show up and your blueprint does not match your life conditions, you have to still bloom. You must still bloom there. And you could have gone to church forever. You could have gone, 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 gone to church and love the Lord and love Jesus just like I do. I didn't just grow up in a church. And let me just stop there for a moment. Let me just stop there because I'm going to step on some toes because it's time. I'm not talking about being religious. See, religion is man-made. I am speaking about having a personal relationship with your personal Lord and Jesus. Okay? Yes, a personal relationship. I had that all of my life. So when my mother left this world, you couldn't tell me that that was okay. Really? I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to seek God. I didn't want to hear from the Holy Spirit. And I definitely didn't want to hear from other people telling me what I should do and how I should move forward. So my illusion that I was to struggle started to take place. Oh, it started to take place. And then God said, he tapped me on the shoulder, tapped me over and said, wait a second, my child, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to struggle. That's right, Auntie Betty. You will bloom where you are planted, no matter what it looks like. Well, wait a second. I have a couple more keys to go. Number two, when you feel like you cannot pull on and hold on to your faith, your spirituality has been depleted. Number two, in order for you to bloom when you're planted, you need to return to the origin of your identity. Return to the origin, to the genesis of your identity. Ask yourself, who do I belong to? 
Who do I belong to? To whom do I belong to, right? Do I belong to this circumstance? Do I belong to my situation? Do I belong to other people's perceptions of me? Do I belong to low expectations? Do I belong to fear? Do I belong to all of those doubts that I'm hearing in my head, which is called that negative self chatter? No, you have to realize that your identity is what God based. He created you. So I had to get still. I had to get still when my spirituality was depleted, was being questioned by my own self. When my spirituality had deflated. When I didn't understand what was happening. See, I had been this woman. I had grown up in a faith-based church. Shout out to Crenshaw Christian Center, Dr. Fred Price, ho, Dr. Betty, ho, Dr. Fred Price Jr., ho. That's my place of worship. So you know I was faith-filled, honey. Faith-filled, right? Mother passed away. I didn't know what happened. I didn't understand it. I had questions coming from everywhere, from inside of me, everyone, inside of me. So while I was in that incubator stage with God, you see, he said, number one, you don't have to struggle. Number two, to whom do you belong to? You belong to me. You belong to me, Deshaun, not to the fact that you are mourning. I get that you're mourning. You don't belong to the grief. You belong to me. Then number three, the third key, the third key. Remember, I'm giving you keys because a key does what? It unlocks the door to unlimited possibilities. The third thing you must do when you are feeling spiritually depleted is that you must acknowledge. Say acknowledge with me. If you hear me say acknowledge, just tap please, on your computer screen. I hear you, Deshaun. You're saying acknowledge. You must acknowledge that we live in a fallen world. There is no utopia here on earth. You must acknowledge that you live right in a fallen world. So when you live in a fallen world, we have to stop being the persons. Yes, give me the love. Give me the love. I see you. I see you. I see you, Janine. Hello. Hello, Janine. Thank you for joining us. When you realize and acknowledge that we live in a fallen world, then you stop trying to find the answers to your difficulties. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Stop trying to find the answers to your difficulties because I, I got one for you. See, this is what happens. God said this. He said, go to my word. And his word says this. He says this, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into what? Diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith does what? Work it what? Patience, right? That is James 1, 2, and 3. So because we live in a fallen world, because you and I live in a fallen world, we have the scripture, and you have to pull the scripture up out of the Bible. Come on, everybody. Stop having these theori the 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 theories in your head about the word of God. Stop living in theory. Remember when you were in high school and you had a science class, chemistry to be more specific? You had a chemistry class, right? And the chemistry class had a lab and a lecture. Well, we treat our life like a lab and a lecture. But for the most part, we don't want to do the lab part. We don't want to do the lab part. See, we want to go and get filled with the word of God and hear the lecture. We want to go and hear the word of God turn us up and make us feel good. But as soon as an affliction comes, as soon as an unforeseen tragedy happens or, or or circumstances happen we don't want the lab see the lab shows up so that you can show out with god the lab shows up so you can pull out the scriptures and make it real in your life so because we are not living in a utopia and we live in a fallen world right hello Janie. thanks for joining us because we live in a fallen world, right? We do, and we do, and we will until Jesus comes, right? Because of that, you want to be able to say, what scripture can I pull that is going to allow me to see that I'm not alone? So when he tells you, my brethren, my brethren, what do you do? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, right? Into temptations, right? Why do we do that? Why must we do that? We must do that, Janie. We must call on God's word where he says, count it all joy. Where you fall into what? 
diverse trials and tribulations, temptations, right? Why is it that we have to pull that and make that real? Because this is where you get your strength. Why does God tell us that? He wants you to be able to do what? Bloom where you are planted spiritually. Where you are feeling spiritually depleted, you have to now know how to turn that around. Turn that around. Say turn that around. Type in there, turn that around. I want to welcome Stacy, my soror, to the conversation. I am talking today about how you bloom, where you were planted, when you were feeling spiritually depleted, when you were feeling spiritually depleted. See, Stacy knows what I'm talking about because Stacy also lost her mom some years ago. So when you lose your mom, you've lost an entire part of your being. And your spirituality is truly being tested. So how do you bloom when you're in that place, ladies and gentlemen? How do you bloom there? See, God had to get really quiet with me and show me how to do that over the course of 9, 10, 11 months. He had to show me that. He had to teach me that. And so that is what I'm sharing with you today over the course of the next days. I am bringing to you how do you bloom when you're planted, when you are feeling, when you are feeling like you just can't do it any longer, okay? And so we're talking about the next step is consider your trial and your tribulations, consider Consider them a joy, an opportunity. Now, Deshaun, wait a minute. You mean you want me, Deshaun, to consider something that is not making me feel good, something that is hurt, something that is painful? You want me, Deshaun, to consider that joy? Absolutely. Hold on, everyone. I am not going to have my hair making me hot and sweat out again today. Check it out. I am so ready. Don't worry about what I'm looking like because I'm here for the message. See, the message is bigger than me. The message is bigger than me. So get the message. Get the juicy nuggets that I'm dropping in your spirit today, in your mindset today. Thank you very much. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I want to also welcome my Auntie Kathy for joining. Thank you, Auntie Kathy. Love to see you. We're talking today about how to bloom where you are planted. When you are feeling spiritually depleted which is what I went through after the loss of my mother, okay? So I started this conversation yesterday. So if you want to see part one, please go and look on my Facebook page for how to bloom where you were planted emotionally yesterday. Today we're talking about spiritually. And I had to put my hair up because I am not going to have an asthma attack because it is extremely hot. So we've gone through the steps. Number one, I said you must do what? And you can type them in so other people want the conversation, can see it. You can hit me up, tap me up, let me know you're liking what you're hearing. I need to know that you're hearing this and it's registering for you and your spirit. The first thing I said you have to do to bloom where you're planted when you feel spiritually depleted is you must what? Give up the illusion that you have to suffer, that you have to struggle, right? Number two, you need to return to the origin of your identity. Ask yourself, to whom do I belong to, right? You belong to God. You belong to God. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. You're the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. Number three, you must acknowledge, you must acknowledge that we live in a fallen world. That's why you have to go to the scripture that says, Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, which is trials and, and tribulations, right? And then it says that you are going to do what? Be, be patient about that. That's James 1, 2, and 3. Number four, the fourth, the fourth key. I want you to consider your trials and your tribulations a joy. Why, Deshaun? Because you want to be able to go to God and seek wisdom and how to undertake the trial. Don't pray for the removal of the affliction. Let's stop doing that. Don't pray, oh God, take this affliction from me. No, you want to pray to God, right? That he will allow you to move in his wisdom so that you can be what? Elevated to the next level of your success spiritually. Come on now. We talk about we want to go and do this. It's like being an Olympian. What does an Olympian want to do? An Olympian wants to do what? Get the gold medal. Get the gold medal, Christians. Come on now. Come on. 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 Tap it up. Tap it up. Yes, 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 yes. You want to go and ask God for wisdom and how to move you truly through your circumstance. 
Number five. Some of you are going to say, I don't know how to do that, Deshaun, when I'm feeling like defeated, right? Next, you want to honor. Say honor with me. H-O-N-O-R. Honor. You want to honor the circumstance. Uh-huh. Yes. Whatever that circumstance is, whatever you are in, you want to honor it. You want to say, God, I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Janie, you know, I just lost my auntie, my auntie Chi Chi of cancer. Like, my mom passes and then my auntie. Well, let's just go back. Let's go back. My mom passed away, right? A month after my mom passed, on the exact day that we buried my mother, I watched my mom dog die in front of me. Duke had a heart attack in front of me while I was preparing his meal for the evening. I said, God, come on, wait, wait a second. Wait a second, God. Wait a second, God. Wait a second, God. Like, God, how much of this am I supposed to endure? You mean to tell me I lose my mom? And then a month later to the day that we bury my mom, I watch her dog die in front of me because he had been grieving my mom just deeply. He had a heart attack, Duke, in front of me. And then I lose my aunt my auntie Chi Chi to cancer. Okay. All right. Wait a second. I told you God had me in an incubate stage with him, with him, because I couldn't see myself through it. I didn't talk to a lot of people about it. I didn't go and run and tell this. I didn't go and run and tell that. I at the time I needed to speak to them. I spoke to who I needed to speak to. I ran into my auntie Kathy one day, ran into her at the mall. She didn't know she was depositing into my life the way she was. She didn't know exactly. She knew because I said some things, but she didn't really know what was happening. So God was putting people in my place that he wanted me to just hear from, that he wanted me to hear from. So when I say to you, you have to honor the circumstances. You have to say, God, I thank you for this. I thank you because I know not that there's just a silver lining around it, but there is a higher, a higher consciousness behind this. There is a higher lesson behind this. That's what God wants you to understand. Patty has just joined me. Patty, I want to thank you for joining me. She also lost her mom some years ago. And so, Patty, today I'm talking about how do you bloom where you're planted? When you feel spiritually depleted, when you feel spiritually detached, how do you bloom? How do you bloom? So you have to honor your circumstances, Stacy. You have to honor your circumstances. You have to now do this. You have to now take gratitude in action. That's called grit in action. I want someone to type that in. Gratitude in action. See, because we talk about having a sense of gratitude, right? But gratitude in action looks like this. Deshaun, I am hurting. I just lost my dot, dot, dot. Whatever your dot, dot, dot is. You just lost that, right? It just like sold up and just sucked the life out of you. And then I'm saying to you, you go to God and say, God, I don't get it, and I certainly don't like it, and I'm certainly hurting. I am in pain, but God, I am going to say thank you, because if I go back to my other step that I gave you all, right, my other key that says what? You're not by yourself. Who do you belong to? He will never leave you, right? You're the apple of God's eye. Number six of our keys today. Number six, I want you to release the circumstance to God. I want you to release the circumstance to God. Absolutely. Stop trying to be God yourself. Ooh, did I say that? Yes, I did. Stop trying to be God yourself. Just stop it. That's why he's God. God says to us in 1 Peter 5 and 7, Cast your cares upon me because why? I care for you. Again, he says, cast your cares or your anxieties, right? Upon me because I care for you. 
But we don't want to do that. Oh, no. I have to struggle again. There we go with that illusion of struggle. Stop doing that to yourselves. See, I thought I had to struggle. And then God said, no, Deshaun, cast your cares on me. Now, we know that scripture. We know, we've heard that scripture, right? But what you don't understand is this. You only hold the scripture in theory. Remember I talked about theory versus the lab, right? right? Right, 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 The lab versus lecture, right? So stop just holding on to, and I'm not preaching to you. I'm really not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm simply sharing the breakthrough in my life. For your breakthrough is in your life. I'm simply sharing. I'm simply sharing. You may be doing all of this, and that's absolutely wonderful. Share it with someone else. As a matter of fact, you can share this video with all your friends, okay? So when I say to you that last key is to cast your care on God because he cares for you, that's what he says, right? That is the most humbling behavior we can give our Heavenly Father. I'm going to say that again. That is the most humbling. Say humbling with me. That is the most humbling, humbling experience that we could have is to cast our cares on our Father, you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to do that. You don't. Again, God loves you. He created you. There is no circumstance that could ever isolate you from God's loving presence. I'm going to say that again. There is no circumstance. And you're looking at someone that knows that. You're looking at someone that went through that. Hello, Latara. Love you. Coach, oh, she's one of my coaches. Love you, Latara. The woman is hot. Check her out. Check her out. Check her out. I'm talking today about how do you bloom where you're planted when you've been spiritually depleted, when you've been spiritually detached. Like, how do you bloom? How do you bloom where you're planted? And of course, we talked about where I got that from, right? We talked about that came from 1 Corinthians, okay, when Paul was talking about slavery versus a freed man. So I'm just here giving you these keys and I've gave them. I'm going to say them again, but I just want you to understand this, everyone that's joining, that's listening. And I so adore you for doing this and taking this time to allow me into your space today. Like, thank you. But I want to say this. There's no set of circumstances, and I do mean none, that could ever isolate you from the living, realistic presence of God. There's none. So once you really understand, acknowledge, own that, you will be on your way to blooming where you are planted spiritually. See, we want to wait for the circumstance to leave. We want to wait for the dark storm to leave, right? No, no. You have to begin to allow yourself to bloom during that moment, during that time. That's how you know you are a warrior. That's how you know you are more than a conqueror. That's how you know greater is he that's in me this, that is in the world. That's how you know. See, I'm not talking about some theory. I'm talking about the lab of your life. The lab. Say lab with me. L-A-B. Not just a lecture. Not just a lecture, lecture, lecture. So I want you to get this. You have to leave every event. Every circumstance. Look at my face. I'm so serious. <laughs> you have to leave every. Is there anything left out of every? No. Is there anything left out of every? No. Is there anything Deshaun left out of every? No. You must leave every event to God's wise and gracious disposal and watch how you will bloom where you are already planted. You must leave every event every event, every event to God's wise and gracious disposal. You have to do that. You must do that. There is no circumstance that can isolate you. That's right, Auntie Betty, from God's presence. You just cannot be. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work. You want to bloom where you are. You want to bloom where you are. Then you need to look at these seven keys that I have deposited into your spirit today. That you have allowed me to give you this energy today. I am so excited because I didn't know this. I knew in theory. But then God began to work with me after the passing of my mother, right? He began to work with me. 
with me. As I said yesterday, and I want to share this again. Yesterday when I spoke, and you can look at the replay on my Facebook page. Yesterday when I spoke, I shared this story. When I was going through all of my turmoil, right, and my, my hangups and my hurts and my grief and my mourning, and I'm still mourning my mom. I'm still in grief. But do you know that greatness can come out of that? That you can still do both? You can be in grief and still look at greater possibilities? So I want to say this to you. When I was during that time, some of you heard this who were with me yesterday. I went to pray. I went in my room and I got on my knees and I wanted to pray because I had always been, and I'm always, will be, a praying woman, right? And so I got on my knees to pray. And I wanted to do worship, right? I'm a worshiper. I'm an intercessor. Have been since I was 14 years old. And so I wanted to go in and give God all of that. But I had all these questions in my head. And my heart was really broken and confused because I lost my mom. And, and I've been praying, you know, for my family like I do every single day. I'm always saying that in my family's pathway is life and there is no death. I confess that daily over my family, over myself, over my friends. By name, I do that. By name. Auntie Betty, your name is always included. Yes, it is. So when my mother passed, I, I didn't get that. So I didn't really want to pray. I didn't. Hello, Kia. Hello. Thank you for joining me again today. So when I went to pray, my heart wasn't right. And you know God knows that. God told me, he said, Deshaun, he said, get up. Just get up. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. And I, and I said, wait, wait, what, 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 wait a minute. What do you mean? I was going to try to pray and praise God. And, you know, I was just going to manufacture. <laughs> yes. Say that word with me. I was going to manufacture. God said, no, 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 no. When you're ready, then you come to me. Then you come to me. And so God because he's such a gentleman. God is such a gentleman. He just waited for me as he worked with me. That's God's grace in action. That's his grace in action. That's his grace. So I want you to do the keys that I gave to you today. If you're just joining us, look at the replay. I talked about six keys, how you can bloom where you are planted, when you feel spiritually depleted spiritually detached we don't always talk about that we talk about how to bloom where you're planted if you don't like your job right if you don't like the relationship you're in if you don't like where you live physically but we don't talk about how do you bloom where you're planted if you are feeling emotionally depleted and spiritually depleted and so i've been talking about that this week so I want to give you some homework. I'm always giving homework. And I call it growth work, right? Right? Stimulating work, right? Transformational work. So I want you to write this down. It's actually just like what I gave you yesterday. I want you to write down your vision, your vision of what it looks like for you to have a healthy spiritual lifestyle. I want you to write down your vision of what it looks like for you to have a healthy spiritual lifestyle. That's all. You don't have to share it with anyone. You don't have to even send it to me. You can. You can let me know, right? Hashtag bloom where you're planted. You can hashtag that, right? Okay. And I want you to just do that. I want you to write out your vision of what it looks like for you to have a healthy spiritual lifestyle. Because you know why? You deserve it. You're worth it. That's your value. That's who you are. That's who you are. There's no place, no desolate that you cannot find God. God is everywhere. He is in your isol isolated places. He's in when you feel worse, when you're in the pit, where you don't think you can get up. God is there. And that is how you bloom for me. And I'm just sharing that with you. 
And I really hope that you loved it, that you, J Dana just joined me. Dana, I love you. Dana, 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 your due date, <laughs> Shug, your due date for your assignment is tomorrow, okay? I want you to do that. So again, your assignment, Dana, I'm talking about how do you bloom? Where you're planted, okay, when you feel spiritually depleted, spiritually detached. And I gave some keys to that, some steps. So look at the replay, okay? All right? But, yes, yeah, so the homework is for you to just simply write out your vision. Your vision of what it looks like for you to have a healthy, say healthy, healthy, that's right, a healthy, healthy, healthy spiritual lifestyle, and I want to know that you did that. So you can hit me up tomorrow on my Facebook page and say, Deshaun, oh my goodness. You can even share what it is if you want to. Yes, 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 yes. Let's empower each other. So I want to do this for you. I want to also send out an invitation. I want you all to begin to join my group on Maximizing Your Magnificence. That's my Facebook page, Maximizing Your Magnificence, where I have what I call the Maximizers. If you are a maximizer or if you want to be a maximizer, join my Facebook page, Maximizing Your Magnificence on Facebook. And I do a lot of this same type of coaching. I go a little bit more in detail. I talk about my services and products. I also would love for you to follow me on Periscope, on Instagram, on Twitter at Deshaun Booker. That's Deshaun, D-S-H-A-U-N. Booker, B-O-O-K-E-R. I also want you to know that I am having my first live event. That's right. I'm having my first live event. It is a one-day women's conference, and it is entitled Meeting in the Ladies' Room, The Movement. And the theme is Reclaiming Your Power. It is Saturday, October the 29th in Playa Vista, California. I will give you all of the juicy, juicy, juicy details coming very, very soon. It will also be on my website, which is getting ready to launch in, oh my God, a couple of days. Yes, 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 yes. So again, I'm going to go quickly over the, over the keys, okay? So number one, in order to bloom where you are planted, when you are feeling spiritually depleted, and detach, you must give up, number one, you must give up the illusion that you have to struggle. Number two, you want to return to the origin of your identity, God, right? You want to be in sync with who God said you are. Number three, you want to acknowledge that we live in a fallen world. It's not a utopia. So the scripture that I gave for that was what? Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. James 1, 2, and 3. Number four, the fourth key is that you want to consider your trial and your tribulation a joy. Why? Because you want God to be able to show up and show out and give you wisdom how to what? Handle your affliction. Don't ask God to remove the affliction. Number five, you want to honor the circumstance. You want to find your what? Gratitude and God allowing this to even take place so that you can rise up to your higher level, your highest potential, okay? And number six, you want to release the circumstance to God. Stop trying to be God over everything. You're not even God, right? We're his co-creator, but release the circumstance to God. He says, cast your cares upon me because why? I care for you. First Peter 5 and 7. So I want to thank you for joining me. I am so excited that you allowed me into your space into your home, into your office, into your cars, into wherever you are. I am so, so grateful to that. I don't take anything for granted. Again, I am Deshaun, the maximizing coach, and I love getting people to get intentional, live with integrity, and manifest increase. That is what I love to do. And I'm honored to share this with you. You have been such a blessing for me. And I just want you to know that your life matters because God said so. And he created you to do wonderful things. I want you to know that this week is a beautiful, blessed week for you. Just show up for that. Marcia, oh my God, Marcia, I just saw your live, right? And I'm going to go back and look at your live. 
You're, you were live on Facebook earlier. Another coach. Woo, 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 woo. Marcia Chambers Mayfield is in the house. Marcia, I'm getting ready to go back after my client and look at your live, okay? I Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was like, she was live. Got to see what she's dropping. You see something? Let me say this to everyone out there. Coaches have coaches. That's what we do. Iron sharpens iron. Am I right, Marcia? Am I right? Does iron sharpen iron? So the coaches like myself, we come from a tribe of powerful women. And I want you to be empowered, which is why I'm doing the work. So if you didn't catch all of today's conversation, go ahead and hit the replay. And catch me tomorrow because I'm in agreement with you that tomorrow I'm going to talk about bloom where you are planted mentally when you have been mentally depleted whoo mentally detached whoo talking about that tomorrow okay delia i love you one of my students i love you god bless you god bless everyone have a wonderful evening a wonderful tomorrow and i will see you again tomorrow mwah, mwah. love you and as always i say smooches and deuces but i love to tell you to take wings. God bless you. God bless you.